We want to encourage all children, especially tweens and adolescents, to get vaccinated for this disease. Pertussis at its best is an inconvenient disease and at its worst is a potentially deadly disease. Um, in adolescents and in adults, often the, the disease presents itself as a pretty typical cough and cold symptoms for the first two weeks. This is uh, the time when people are most contagious and probably don't think they're infected with whooping cough or pertussis. What happens after that for the next two weeks, this is in the third or fourth week of the illness, is that the cough increases and people can have coughing fits, which they often can't control. Um, they call this, they call pertussis the 100 day cough. People can cough for months on end. Now in younger children, the medical effects of this disease are more serious occasionally um, children can get pneumonia and then sadly are the infants, uh, children who haven't had a chance to get vaccinated, very young infants can die from this disease. Something that's important to note about pertussis is it is a bacterial disease. However, antibiotics do not shorten the course of pertussis. So even if you are diagnosed with pertussis, there's not a medicine you can get to end your symptoms and to end the contagiousness. Um, so this is important to know. Now, as Dr. Fielding mentioned, that uh, we are encouraging people to get what we call the booster shot. So many children, when they're young infants, get the routine shots, which happen at two, four, six months, 12 months, 15 months. It seems endless to new parents. There's, there's many shots. But in the case of pertussis, the immunity wanes. We are protected by pertussis from this vaccine for many years, but by the time children get into adolescence and by the time they get into middle school, this immunity has waned and they need a booster. And with the this epidemic of pertussis in the state, the more children we have who are not protected, the more chances we have of people getting infected and spreading the disease to other people, which is what we're seeing. We've seen over 8,000 cases in California as compared to 800 cases a uh, year or two before. So 800 to 8,000 cases. And the way to prevent the spread of this disease is to get vaccinated and to not just vaccinate your children, but to give the children who are entering middle school a booster shot. Adults are also encouraged to get a booster shot after the age of 18. This shot, which I think is notable to say is the Pertussis booster is batched with the te with tetanus and diphtheria, and we call it the D the Tdap. Some people say, "Well, I got my tetanus booster a year ago. Can I get the Tdap? Can I get the tetanus combined with the pertussis?" Absolutely, you can get you can get a booster. There is no minimum time that you have to wait between the tetanus booster and a tetanus combined uh, tetanus pertussis booster. Um, the requirements for entering middle school right now for the 2011-2012 year is that all children entering 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade need to show proof that they have gotten a Tdap, a pertussis booster, after the age of 7. Starting, in, starting the year after that, the 2012-13, only children starting at 7th grade will have to show proof of booster shot. You want to mention? Wonderful. Excuse me? Uh, my name is Dr. Rebecca Crane and R E B E C C A and Crane C R A N E. I am a pediatrician and internal medicine physician, and I am at work in the Department of Family Medicine. Well, so they they so what the antibiotics do if you are diagnosed with pertussis and what can happen with this disease is that since it starts off so mundanely, it, since it starts as like a typical cough and cold, there is not often this pursuit by the doctor to test for pertussis, which is a um, PCR test. It's a it's a it's a test that has to be sent to a lab 
PCR test means we obtain some secretory fluids from the nose and send it off to a lab. It takes a few days to come back. Oftentimes when people present with their, or they may not even present because it's just a cough and cold. By the time the cough really gets going and people think something is wrong after two to three weeks, if we test then and we determine that a person has pertussis, when they get antibiotics, it doesn't necessarily stop the course of the disease. What, can, what antibiotics can do is it can decrease the transmission of pertussis, but then again, the first two weeks of the illness are the most contagious part, and you've, you know, you've, you've missed this opportunity to prevent contagion. So if someone has pertussis, they get the antibiotics, it hasn't shown to decrease the duration of the disease. It can prevent further transmission to family members and such, but really the best treatment of pertussis is vaccination, is to prevent the illness. The, the best treatment for pertussis is not to get it. <laughs> and because most adults aren't going to recognize, and even doctors aren't going to recognize in that first couple of weeks that it is pertussis, um, we're not going to be able to prevent the spread very effectively that way. So this is a vaccine preventable disease. This is a great example of where prevention is our most important way to reduce the overall toll and to stop this epidemic.